Well, let's get started. Good evening and uh, welcome to the session on uh, functional fluency in uh, Java. Well, uh, before I get started, how many are familiar with uh, screens and uh, lambdas? Almost all. Okay, so while uh, Java 8 introduced uh, you know lambdas and streams, which helped us to do functional programming in uh, Java, maybe Java was one of the last languages to support uh, functional programming. Uh, uh, once we started uh, using that, uh, I mean it provides a good start, but uh, soon we will start uh, hitting the limit of functional programming and uh, we see certain uh, gaps. So uh, in this uh, session I am trying to address how we can do more uh, fluent functional programming in Java. And uh, in this case, uh, uh, I mean there are there many people have uh, tried to fill this gap by writing their own uh, uh, libraries uh, and uh, uh, in fact there is one good library uh, that uh, is uh, kind of fulfills uh, most of the gaps uh, which was called uh, uh, Java slang in the beginning but uh, since the word Java was a trademark uh, belongs to Oracle, uh, people decided to uh, change the name but uh, somehow people didn't, didn't want to uh, didn't want to see the, uh, the the sticker so that's why they just uh, turned the Java around and uh, got uh, B A B R uh, so waiver uh, so they could use the their uh, you know, uh, laptop sticker that that's how uh, they got into uh, this uh, name so mostly I am going to use the functionalities uh, provided by uh, this uh, library. Uh, to, do, to show you the uh, or to demonstrate the more fluent functional program. So without delay, let's uh, get uh, started. Okay, I hope uh, people are able to follow this uh, code. Uh, so we uh, I have a predicate uh, even which checks whether uh, number is even and I have a you know function uh, uh, which uh, doubles uh, the given uh, number uh, and uh, I, I'm, as a data I'm starting with the list here and uh, I am uh, uh, but to get uh, you know this map filter reduce uh, functionalities uh, I have to uh, create a stream out of uh, my uh, list that's why I use uh, numbers uh, dot uh, stream because uh, you know uh, they couldn't uh, change the earlier interfaces that's why they had to introduce uh, stream then once your uh, uh, processing pipeline is over uh, you want to collect it uh, you know, back to list using the collect and uh, if you run this uh, you know, you're going to get all the even numbers uh, multiplied by uh, 2 that is 4 8 uh, 12 uh, by the way feel free to ask uh, any questions uh, so uh, obviously you would see I had to do something the uh, stream which is totally uh, you know a noise uh, here uh, though uh, I don't have any real benefit of doing that there's no real need for that but, but it's more of uh, that we, we have to you know, agree to uh, Java's way of uh, doing things which, which should have been under the hood by the way and we have to convert it uh, back, back to this. so this is the first thing uh, that uh, comes in the way of uh, writing the uh, uh, fluent uh, uh, functional program so Let's see how we could uh, use uh, uh, Waver library and uh, create, uh, get this done. So I have retained the predicate. Uh, by the way, Java provides a uh, function and uh, by function. So if you want uh, anything, the uh, function which accepts more than uh, two arguments, uh, you will have to write uh, your own uh, functional uh, interfaces, which uh, Waver avoids. So you, you instead of, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in this case, I want a function which accepts one argument one so I could uh, use uh, function uh, one provided by your uh, waiver uh, you have right from function zero to function uh, eight which uh, could be used so I have that so let me create with the list uh, data so I, I don't have to do all those ceremony here I could right away you know create list uh, I want uh, yeah from uh, the collection we want to Five. So I got a list. So Java did add uh, something of this list dot of in uh, uh, 
uh, Java uh, 9 uh, which uh, kind of uh, uh, creates uh, uh, immutable uh, uh, collection but uh, you know it comes with a lot of uh, if and else so uh, if you could read the documentation it comes with a lot of uh, yeah so let's get uh, started with the, this list and uh, right away I want to you know filter so I can say filter all the even uh, numbers and uh, then what I want is to map which is the doubler then I can uh, uh, say for each I can just uh, print the So, so you are just focusing on uh, what you need. Uh, so, a couple of things to notice: we already talked about uh, uh, functions. So, the list what what I used here comes from uh, the Weaver uh, library, which, which is uh, in indeed a uh, persistent process, process collection. Uh, so, you know whatever immutable benefit you want to take advantage of, that that is uh, available to you uh, right away. Uh, having said that, it, it doesn't implement uh, the Java util uh, uh, collection or Java util uh, list. Uh, uh, there are uh, you know certain uh, convenient uh, function which which will help you to say from here you can say to uh, Java list to Java map to Java set all those things. So if, if at all you have other I'll I'll come to that. Yeah, so so you you, you can use uh, take advantage of uh, those functions and uh, convert back to Java collections and uh, you know use it in the code that you have already uh, written. So the next thing, uh, let's uh, go back to the here and uh, one one good thing about Java streams uh, is that it's uh, indeed uh, uh, lazy. So I could just uh, say instead of uh, select, I could just do find uh, first and. Uh, in this case, let me directly do get, even though there's a possibility that the value may not be present, but in this case, at least I uh, know that. So let me just uh, put a P and uh, see that's a filter. All I wanted was uh, four, so you know, it, 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 it was lazy and it uh, didn't process uh, all the, uh, the elements. So, so this property is uh, maintained by uh, Weaver also. Uh, we will get to see more of uh, those. Uh, so let's do a few things here. Say I, I already have a numbers uh, dot stream. Uh, say I, I want to use, uh, I, I want to perform a different set of operations on the same set of data. So I think I already have a number, I have a stream, why not we uh, reuse uh, this uh, stream here. Right? Let me take the stream out, and uh, the code uh, still works fine. So now let me say stream uh, dot for each, and uh, let's uh, say uh, yeah. So this is cool. Okay, just want to. Print this. So, what is going to happen? That's an interesting exception. Uh, it says uh, that stream has already been uh, operated upon or uh, closed. So, that means that uh, you cannot uh, reuse that stream uh, you know, after a set of operations. You'll have to throw it away. You'll have to create a new, new, uh, uh, you know, new stream from that uh, because under the hood, uh, stream is uh, just a uh, uh, kind of a uh, decorated uh, iterator which uh, maintains uh, state. So let's try to do this here in our uh, uh, a waiver version of the code. And uh, uh, I, I can also create create a stream uh, directly using uh, stream dot off like this. Now uh, I can. Let me 
try to reuse that. So I say numbers dot for each. But I, I could, uh, you know, the first one was for eight, then I could print the number from one to five. So you could uh, reuse the stream. So that's one. So now, now if I just try to print the stream as such, which is a stream of this process here, but uh, uh, the stream is actually, oh yeah, let me just copy it up. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's a list. So by default, uh, you have the first element, which is the head, and the uh, rest of the elements are uh, not processed, so as, as required, would uh, go ahead and uh, process it. Uh, with that, let's uh, get into solving the uh, FizzBuzz problem. People are aware of uh, FizzBuzz? Okay, so this is how the, you know, uh, every third word is a Fizz, every fifth word is a Buzz, so, you know, if the 15th word would be FizzBuzz, and uh, others, you'll have to say the numbers, the sequence. So, I, I would have one, two, Fizz, four, Buzz, Fizz, seven, eight, this was uh, like that. Uh, I mean, you, you, you would need a lot, lot of uh, code in the if you're going for iterative style, but uh, you could use uh, Java 8 uh, streams and uh, get it to some extent. Uh, but one of the interesting uh, ways of uh, solving this problem is uh, using uh, infinite uh, streams or infinite sequence, right? So, you know, ev every third word is uh, fizz. So how, how, how can I model that? I can say stream of uh, first word is empty, second word is empty, and third word is fizz. So I, I want to repeat this infinitely. I don't know how, how many I want. Uh, Java 8 stream doesn't provide anything, while uh, Weaver stream does provide a function called a cycle. So I can uh, use this. So now I got uh, fizz. Similarly, I can uh, create a buzz. So first word is the blank, second is blank, third is blank. I have bus and I would uh, cycle it. Again, I would get an infinite uh, a stream of uh, bus. What can I do now? How can I combine this and bus? Any thoughts? Yep. Yeah. Zip. Uh, yeah. Zip works uh, quite, uh, you know, in an excellent way if you're using the Haskell, but here I'll, I'll just have to use two at a time. So I cannot uh, use that number sequence also along with this. So I'll have to do two at a time and then combine with the third. So let, let's try to do that. So fizz and uh, let me say uh, uh, zip and uh, let me try to put uh, buzz here. Okay, so let's uh, put it into a variable called uh, uh, okay, fizz buzz. And let's try to print uh, that. Take uh, ten and uh, for each. Great. Yeah, sorry, it's, it should be fizz bus. Yes. Okay, so. It created, as you could see in the signature here, it created a stream of uh, tuple two, you know, string and string. So in the first position, you'll have the uh, fizz sequence from the fizz stream, and second word, you'll have the uh, word or uh, string from the buzz stream, and by default, uh, it, it created a tuple. Uh, but uh, I, I would want, uh, you know, fizz buzz, I mean, If it comes together, I, I want uh, fizz buzz. Uh, so uh, essentially, what I want is a single value. So what I can do is I can, uh, you know, instead of uh, using zip, I can say zip with with the buzz, of course. And I, I can say how how I can combine uh, these, uh, you know, two. So let's say I have uh, left and uh, right here. 
uh, what, what I need is the you know left concatenated with the right, right? The first word plus the second word. Let's now call it as uh, bills bus. And now you would see that you got uh, let's give it a few bills bus. Uh, yeah, fifteen should be bills bus. So now we want to zip with the 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 you know numbers, right? One, two, three, they should come like that. So how how could I do that? So you see, I have a zip with the index here. So here I could uh, you know pass a, a function again. I could say left and uh, right. So left is the word. So if uh, left is empty, so I can check if length, uh, length is uh, greater than zero. Then I just want to have the word as such. Otherwise, I can just put the uh, the right that the number. Right. Now let me put it. And you can just uh, take the value from the result. So, so pretty pretty much close with the you know functional solution of that. You, even though I would uh, uh, love to have uh, combine combine uh, more than two at a time. And, uh, you know. So that that's how uh, you know you could leverage uh, the infinite uh, uh, streams. Any question? Yeah. It does. Okay, so another important, uh, you know, uh, problem uh, what we see in uh, say while using uh, streams is uh, you know J Java A does have uh, an optional uh, type. So suppose uh, you have a stream of uh, optional values, say optional or date for as option, optional of say one. Put another one of uh, empty. So essentially, I want to get it off uh, all the you know uh, where, wherever there is no value, get the values present and do perform some operation on it, which is a pretty uh, common thing to do. So you will have to do something uh, like this. I want to filter wherever there is a value present. If I don't have a value, not then I, I want to get it off those things. I could uh, use the optional and uh, is present. Then finally, I can uh, map and say optional get whenever value is present. I want to get that, and then I want to put it here, print print that. Get the one and two. Third one is uh, you know, doesn't have any value. That's been uh, you know, running. So which, which is a very pretty common operation, but uh, uh, you have to go through quite a bit of uh, ceremony here. Uh, if you move to the way to do that in uh, waiver, would be something uh, like this. So I can create a stream of. Uh, it provides a new type called option. Uh, this one option of uh, let's take one and option. Two and finally option of uh, none, and I can do uh, flat map. So we can just uh, return it as it is and say print And uh, you, you would get the identity. So instead of this, you could use the you know, uh, identity also, which is a function uh, on the screen. Well, uh, that, that's an interesting reason why they created a new type called option instead of uh, using the optional one, uh, because uh, if you're uh, intentionally returning uh, an empty 
uh, mapping and uh, value to an uh, empty one, uh, it does change the type, whereas uh, here it will uh, retain the type. So okay, so with that, we'll uh, go ahead and uh, see what happens, uh, you know, uh, when we throw an exception uh, from uh, streams, right? So, so it's your uh, uh, composition time will uh, break and uh, you'll have to go back to your old style of uh, try catch and uh, do something like that. So let's uh, take this example. So I have uh, uh, a stream of, uh, you know, a string here, I, which I want to convert uh, to say uh, URI. So I can say map and uh, let me take this value and I can say new URI for that. So this, you, you are going to get an uh, error, which is the, you know, the typical uh, checked exception error. When, whenever uh, your function uh, you know, throws a checked exception, either you have to handle that or you have to declare throws. But uh, this is the you know lambda. I don't have an option to say throws or anything like that. Uh, for that, that there's a uh, simple solution. Uh, usually, you know, the recommended uh, approach is to use the runtime exception in this case. But there's a simple way where you can convert a checked exception to a, you know, uh, I mean, uh, uh, kind of make the compiler uh, happy by uh, saying uh, uh, you can say unchecked and uh, yes. Okay. So now the compiler is happy. It's not uh, going to complain or uh, anything. If I have a, uh, if I introduce uh, you know something which is uh, wrong. Obviously, you're going to get that exception. I think it's lazy. Now you, you could see an exception for that uh, percentage symbol malformed uh, group pair. Uh, so now we, we, we would like to you know uh, go to the next level and handle that exception. Uh, so one of the ways to do that is to you know return uh, option. Uh, so I have uh, created a function uh, called uh, you know, create URI, which instead of returning a URI, which returns an uh, option of uh, URI, so I could uh, use that here. See that it's returning the, the sum or uh, none, and uh, I, I can use the you know uh, flat map and uh, get rid of uh, these. Uh, uh. Wait, don't if you if I want to ignore those, I can just ignore them uh, pretty easy. So that's uh, that's why I. I For each, uh, we'll just uh, you know, go through one by one, and it will. Uh, uh, you, you have to pass a consumer uh, function to that, and it will just uh, you know, get caught for that. Uh, only flat map will do that. Flat map uh, will will uh, on identity it will convert to an empty stream, so empty stream will get ignored. That's why uh, those uh, you know, uh, uh, none. Okay, so that that's one way of uh, handling uh, uh, this uh, problem. Uh, there's another way to do that. Let's just see. Uh, so let let's go go to this example where I have a, a bunch of numbers and I'm just uh, trying to read from uh, those files. So 10.txt, 20.txt, 30.txt, so on, uh, which which works fine as of now. So let me add uh, one more function, uh, one more value to that, and I don't have a file called 30.txt. Uh, that's why uh, it uh, throws uh, an error. So what? Instead of uh, doing this, uh, th there is a way to wrap it in. Uh, you know, uh, try monad for that. So what I could do is I have a value here, and I'll wrap it in a uh, try. Try of try of uh, takes a uh, you know function zero, which uh, so what I need to do is it uh, doesn't take any argument. And uh, here I'll have to do, you know, uh, read the uh, content of uh, value. That's one. 
and uh, now let's see what happens yeah so now again it wrapped it in try so try has uh, you know success and uh, you know failure so for 10 20 30 i got uh, success and uh, for the 40 i got uh, uh, failure so you you can handle the way failure the way you want uh, they you could do get or else uh, where you can uh, you know directly pass some data that's uh, you know, one option if you have any code value or uh, otherwise you have a different uh, recover option where in uh, you know based on the exception thrown you, you can uh, delegate the responsibility to different uh, set of functions uh, so you, you have uh, uh, different flavors here so which you could change here so for uh, one of the exceptions you could use one recover and send dot recover and uh, you could put one more exception uh, so this way you, you, you could so if, if it's like uh, if you want to read right you want to parse some data you tried it first time it failed and you say did some uh, cleaning cleaning and then try to parse it something like that so this is a good way good way of uh, doing that so in, instead if you just want to ignore that or put a default value you could use uh, get or else Okay, so th those are the quite a uh, few ways of uh, you know handling uh, error conditions uh, in uh, stream uh, processing. Now let's move on to a bit of uh, more of uh, you know, functional programming concepts uh, implemented by uh, our paper. Uh, first thing is uh, a lifting. So I have a function uh, factorial here, which uh, is applicable for uh, positive integers. Right? If, if I if I uh, pass negative value, it's going to Throw in everything. So let me say factorial of uh, three. Up uh, so factorial dot apply. Yeah, three. So that's how I could call my lambda. I don't have the uh, you know option to treat uh, lambda like uh, I, I would call other functions. Well, so okay, let's uh, printing uh, six and if I pass a uh, negative number, it's going to throw in uh, exception because uh, in this case, I'm checking if the number is zero. So it's essentially a partial function checking for only positive. Uh, so now I can uh, you know convert uh, this into uh, I say factorial dot. Uh, partial So which is a function uh, one in my case, so I'll say function one dot uh, lift and uh, first thing do factorial. And now I can say the, the function we got after uh, lifting, so we call that. And now we got uh, none. So if, if, if at all I'm passing a valid value, you're going to get a uh, or none, uh, so that that way you you, you could uh, you know, uh, lift the function from a partial function to a full function. Uh, next thing we could see is a uh, partial application of uh, functions. So if I want to call add, so I say add dot apply. So you could see I have uh, three ways to call that. I can call with the uh, one argument, two argument, or three argument. The argument is a you know a full call which, which will return me an integer, but if I call with the two arguments, I'm going to get a function back which accepts one number and returns one. Uh, if I just pass uh, you know uh, one uh, argument, I'm going to get a function which accepts the, the rest of the two arguments and going to return the sum. So I can say apply then comma twenty. In this case, I'm going to get uh, one more function which I apply and pass the third number, I can uh, get the value. 
well. That, that, that's uh, something you could do it instantly, while uh, currying is something you, you just uh, you know, uh, apply one value at a time and you, you derive other functions. Uh, so I can say add dot curry. You know, if, if, if you could just uh, check the signature, it's going to return a function that acts as an integer and uh, you know, returns a function that acts like a function, uh, uh, another function. So let me say curry. How could I call this? I will pass the first number. What will I get? Another function to which uh, I'll have to pass the second one. I'll get one more function. I can call that. That I believe. That. Yeah, that's about uh, currying. Let's uh, take a look at uh, how uh, memoization works. So I have a function. It's uh, supposed to be a costly function, right? It takes a lot of time, uh, and I'm just uh, so I'm just uh, implementing it. So let me call that uh, function by uh, ten. Uh, it says uh, computing for ten, and I'm getting the value eleven. So if I were to call it uh, twice, you would see that again it's going to compute that. So it, 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 even though the func it's a pure function, every time it has to go and perform that uh, costly operation, which I can uh, totally avoid by using the uh, memoization. So what I could do is I could say costly function dot uh, memoized. It will uh, give me the moist function. Now I can just uh, replace here. And uh, you know, uh, the computing for 10 comes only for the first time. Next time, it's, uh, it's going to do the memoized one. Yeah. Now let's take a look at uh, the lazy. So w w one of the simplest way of uh, you know getting uh, making something lazy is to wrap it in a supplier. Uh, so in this case, if I uh, call the you know, supplier dot uh, get. I would uh, get that uh, number. That is really ten. And if I do it uh, twice, it's going to get that uh, twice. Uh, Waver provides a kind of a lazy wrapper around that. Let's see how that works. So I can say lazy off, and I have to pass the supplier. Put uh, that. And you would notice one interesting thing. That. Yeah, so the supplier gets uh, called only once and it, it doesn't uh, call it uh, repeatedly, so that's uh, more effective than you, you, you could do with the playing lambda equation. Well, so th these are the few set of uh, features with respect to functions and uh, with respect to. Uh, Stream uh, processing. Yeah, so so it implements all together a set of uh, API, which uh, could be used for uh, you know, making your functions more uh, uh, fluid. Any questions? Well, uh, the uh, the idea, uh, the decision was to go with the immutable uh, persistent collection. So that's where uh, it would be much easier and effective to do uh, these kind of things rather than uh, for Java. If Java was written uh, from the scratch today, uh, I'm sure uh, most of these would have been laid out in blocks. But uh, since Java, uh, by principle, wants to be backward compatible, uh, a lot of things are uh, not possible. Uh, in the sense, uh, you may have 
features available to the developer more or less, but uh, it will come with uh, its own KVI. That's what we need to find. Whereas uh, uh, something like Waver, which is uh, you know, uh, you know, library altogether, uh, you, you can always be, uh, have a different SDK. So that's what yeah. It is. In fact, uh, Waver is uh, supported by uh, Spring Data. So in, if you're using Spring Data and uh, you want to create entities, you could use all these uh, persistent uh, collections uh, or uh, entity. You could use option, you could use list or set, map, or any of those things, uh, which, which will automatically, you know, uh, work, which will automatically call these uh, two Java list and all whatever you saw, and it will persist there. So you don't have to do any additional work of uh, doing that with this. And interestingly, a lot of, uh, say, if you have a map, you try to get a value from the map. Uh, uh, in Java, you could get a value or uh, null, whereas the waiver uh, map will return you an uh, option. So, you know, given a key, there is a possibility that the value is not present, so you get uh, null. So, so a lot of the APIs are much uh, better, and uh, you don't have to uh, uh, take care of handling. Option itself is safe. Uh, it is. It, it has enough, but uh, you know, it, it does have a get uh, function. So you can always try to do get on uh, option, which uh, can lead to null pointer exception. Uh, but uh, you know, you're not supposed to call get uh, directly. You have to use get or else or one of those. Uh, I mean, if you are very sure that data is your own, something like if I had the few data, uh, then you can go ahead and do get. But otherwise, you are not supposed to use the get. You have to use get or else or one of the Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. You could pass uh, the type actually. There is a of all between. Oh, you, you don't have to do that. It's if, if you have a list and you filter, you already have a list. You don't have to do that. Unless you want to convert it to a Java list. In that case, you could use two Java lists, two Java labels. So that, that, that was uh, you know necessary because uh, you're forced to convert your uh, list into a stream. So now from the stream, you want to convert back to list. That's the reason why it was required here. Not required. Uh, it's maintained by a couple of people as such, and uh, it is uh, Apache V2 licensed. Uh, so, uh, I mean, there's no company as such which is uh, backing this, but uh, I believe it's already used by a quite a few people. And it's, uh, I mean, uh, though I cannot predict the future, but uh, it's uh, as equal as you can. Oh uh, yeah, so they had a benchmark, I think, uh, on the, the GitHub, which uh, might be a bit uh, dated, I believe. Uh, but uh, interesting fact is, if if, if you compare uh, 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 the Waver stream to Java stream, Java stream will be much more uh, performant because uh, it's just an iterator. Right? Uh, so you, you, the only thing that is common between uh, Java's eight or nine streams and uh, 
waiver streams is the name, nothing beyond that, right? <laughs> and uh, Java 8 is totally a mutable uh, version of that, uh, and it's not, uh, uh, so that's one of the reasons why it would be much, uh, uh, that would be much faster. But if you compare something very similar, uh, Well, uh, for those kind of situation, I think uh, you will have to take uh, case by case. Uh, you know, the raw performance of uh, you know in any particular system uh, is uh, uh, quite uh, you know difficult to rely upon. Is it uh, adequate for your job? Uh, does it provide any improvement for what you are already doing? I think you have to look at it from uh, that perspective. It, it's always a trade-off between uh, ease of doing things versus uh, and do you really need it? It, it is. If, if you're using Java already, it, it, it becomes a you know, real good reason for using that. But if you're already on Python, I don't say you come to Java just because, uh, you know, there is a Wavr library. Uh, you know. But if you're on Java platform, yeah, that's a good choice. Yeah, this, this is a, a library just for, uh, you know, functional fluency. There's no actor uh, at all in this. So, you know, uh, if you need actor, you'll have to go for something else. This is not meant for that. Well, uh, Scala and Java are interoperable to some extent. You could use the same uh, uh, bar to for, for uh, this also. Uh, but if you're already on uh, Scala, you have uh, you know Scala ha already has uh, quite a few of these functionalities which you could uh, make use of that. But if you are already on Java and uh, you are thinking of using Scala for a, a subset of that, then you you could consider using this instead of this. But if you're already there, uh, maybe uh, I don't see the reason why to come back. Yeah, I think if you're using Spark, uh, still Scala is a good uh, incentive in my opinion. Uh, because the API is much more fluent uh, compared to the raw Java API. But uh, uh, somehow if you're already on Java API, then yeah, then that would be a good question to ask. Should I use this or Java? Yeah, it is. But it's not, uh, you know, uh, so interoperable with this. This is a simple library right on Java which you could grab and use. Scala will have its own glitches in passing those things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can always uh, convert or uh, back to you know, provide uh, Java views. You could use that. That, that exactly fits. It, it, yeah, it will. Uh, you'll have to ask, is there any reason why you don't want that, right? It's something under the hood. Should you really go and bother about that? Well, that, that's why it's always uh, relative. You, you, you cannot always uh, say, uh, you can't always rely upon the absolute performance. It's more of a trade off between uh, engineering tasks. They, they do have a Jackson extension. We use that. Uh, yeah, they, they have a couple of extensions. Jackson is there. Uh, uh, there is also a property based uh, testing extension uh, of, for this. Yeah. 
you can yeah yeah right you, you can convert yeah it has a converter right well then i think yeah just uh, out of time uh, thanks for being here uh, i hope uh, you enjoyed it and i enjoyed the rest of the thank you